Ciao. Mr. Head, I made you. And now, Mr. Potato Head, Sheriff, Fire Chief, and Lady Accessory Kids. Mr. Potato Heads, sold separately. Mr. Potato Head, I made you. thing I'm wondering about this Potato Head thing. <laughs> you, you've got a lot of thoughts about the potato, don't you? Well, it's just like, questions, really. So, like, is one box now, because, because a few years ago... If, like, you know, you can buy Mr. Potato Head, and then if you wanted, you know, Ms. Potato Head or Mrs. Potato Head or whatever, that's a separate box with a bunch of separate parts. This might actually just be a very smart thing on Hasbro's part to say, right, why don't we just, one like, skew. one box, right, with parts for, for both, um, you know, potatoes that like to wear lipstick and potatoes that don't. Right? Yeah. Or potatoes that like long hair or don't, or big eyelashes or don't. And that's one box. And right. You can just, you know, ship them all over the place rather than saying, well, we're not selling as many boy potato as girl potato. Other question really quickly. Did you even know they were still making Mr. Potato Head? I did not. And yeah. the funny thing about Potato Head, so yeah. let's get rid of that on a Oh, right. I forgot about I, that. I'm not old enough to remember when the idea was potatoes sold separately when when i had one as a kid (laughs) they uh, came with a plastic potato right and actually also a plastic carrot so what my memory is mrs potato head was often mrs carrot like you'd put eyes on the carrot and there was a little bitty body with a plastic body with a skirt that you that made mrs carrot but i never actually you know stabbed an actual potato (laughs) in order to uh give it eyes well no me neither that was a that was a very very long time ago. Apparently, it, it was. And I, every time somebody reminds me that they used to have real potato, that you, people used to use real potatoes for that purpose, it startles me because I know my mom well enough to know that had I walked into her kitchen with a box and said, "Mom, I, I need a potato," she would have said, "No, you can't have a potato." Well, no, here's <laughs> That's the how thing. My that, mom would have been. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. I mean, you can use the potato, right? I like, know. Like when you're done with it, like I, mean, I, I would think that that yeah, would be. Yeah, you just poke, especially if you're going to mash it, right? right I mean, you're just poking right. a couple of holes in it. You, you hey, rinse it and then you cook it. Tuesday, kids, if you want to play with the potato heads, today's the day. Because <laughs> right, tonight. we're making stew later. <laughs> yeah, or pierogi or whatever. Yeah, we're doing. Yeah. yeah, anyway. So that's okay. I might be done with that. I don't know. We'll find out next week. In the if meantime, you need further potato consultation. Let me know. Nice. Wow. That sounds like. I feel like I'm watching like reruns of Carson late at night on Me TV, <laughs> and you just came on with a commercial. <laughs> Call Shelly now. Actually, just hit her up on Twitter at Shelly. On career options. You know. Yeah. There you go. It's not a bad idea. Then hashtag these times in which we live. All right. So. It is time to play the game that it turns out is more popular than I realized. I said a couple of weeks ago that I thought I was probably going to get rid of Wheel of Stuff. And I got a couple of people write to me and they said, I would really miss Wheel of Stuff if it went away. So, you know, it's around at least for the foreseeable future. It's, of course, the game where uh, I bought a decision maker app called Daily Decision Wheel. And I will say their name because they keep updating this app, which is amazing to me. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I put a bunch of stuff on it, and then we spin the wheel, and wherever it lands, uh, that hopefully generates questions, or answers, excuse me, although it might lead to more questions. Shelley, are you ready to spin the wheel of stuff? I am, and I will say that I have enjoyed the wheel of stuff as a listener, and on the uh, one occasion I played it before, I enjoyed it, but I will reserve judgment until we see what the wheel brings me today. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Well, uh, l- let us begin. Your favorite comedian? Oh gosh, let's see. My favorite comedian. Oh, that's a hard. One. I don't really follow comedy all that much. Uh, I mean, I have mm-hmm. in the past. I'm stalling. <laughs> Can I tell I think you? Of one. Well, I'll give yes? you. I'll give you a couple really quickly. Um, okay. Mine was Dana Gould, and it remains Dana Gould. But because of like some weird confluence of something, I actually kind of got friendly with Dana Gould which was weird because he was listening, it turns out, to Mission Log back when I was doing that. And he wrote to us. Nice. And, and my co-host, John Champion, wrote back like a two-word, like, hey, thanks a lot. And I was like, what is the matter with you? <laughs> so then I wrote Dana Gould, this like long, gushing, whatever, like fanboy letter. And then he wrote back to me and he was on Mission Log a couple of times and, you know, we email occasionally. Nice. And yeah. So it was, that was wonderful because he was always, always one of my favorites. 
And then that happened and it just got better from there. The other one, I'm really loving George Wallace right now because on Twitter, he's just insane. So I'm going to have to show my age and also how long it's been since I've paid attention to comedy. I haven't watched Comedy Central in ever, forever, whatever. But um, I always loved Tracy Ullman because I thought she was just so amazingly flexible in what she could do. I loved that show that she had, which eventually gave birth to The Simpsons, but mm -hmm. I love it for its own sake. Mm -hmm. And I know, and she's been an actress since then. I don't even know if she does anything comedy adjacent now. But uh, and And as I say that, her name i can think of others i also enjoy but i'm going to stick with tracy allman all right that's really interesting i've actually i've actually had um uh what is the name of that song that she did they've never heard of love the one that was actually uh, her theme song for the tracy oh, allman show yeah. yeah yeah i don't remember yeah that song's been stuck in my head for like two days you're welcome. very strange that you just, well no before <laughs> that i mean I've, I've actually been walking wow. around humming that for like that's the, funny kind of weird you want to spin again sure good because you have to I know, I have no choice. It's a contractual obligation. Scariest thing you ever did. What's the scariest ah! thing you ever did? Now, here's the thing. It can be one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, uh, in the moment this happened or I made this big life-changing decision and that was, you know, whatever. Uh, you can answer the question however you like. It just needs to be the scariest thing you ever did. I, I wish that, especially because yesterday we had this conversation about cars. I, I, I have a story that I wish was my story because then the scariest thing I ever did would be to drive a car mm. because I have a friend who is blind and who did that. And th I, I wish I had done it. So that could be my scary story, but it, it's not. <laughs> okay. So I can't. But I just remember him and he, he did this thing where like he would was driving the car and he had a white cane sticking out the door. It was, it was a joke. Anyway, uh, <laughs> while he was driving because he, he became a Jehovah's Witness later in life. Yeah, I'm stalling. So what? All right. uh, <laughs> uh, I want to think of something like visceral. I mean, it should be something like some travel related thing where I went into a, a place that I, I think in retrospect, like I've been in situations where I've not realized it was going to be scary and it was because i was traveling alone in the dark and didn't know where i was and was completely and utterly lost so it wasn't like i made the affirmative decision let's do this thing that's scary it was more like oh you are now in a dark place there are no people around there's no signage to help you know where you are uh maybe the street is maybe it's dangerous but at the very least you have no idea where you are and this was before the days of cell phones mm -hmm. and that's happened to me a couple of times and at least on one occasion i added to that was a neighborhood with that, that seemed scary to me um you mm -hmm. know there were there were there were folks who i don't think met me well and so uh yeah that was inadvertently the scariest thing i ever did was just get myself in travel trouble hmm that was kind of a bummer i'm glad that's I not know. the last i'm glad that's not where we're ending because that's like yeah Maybe no that's take okay that one. i i mean i'd like to i i'd like to say I, well i i had my my next alternative that i just decided wasn't very entertaining was <laughs> it would have been like you know moving across country or something but that wasn't the least bit scary i was like yeah let's do it wait a minute so, you moved across the country i lived in california for five years oh i forgot that part that's yeah. right okay yeah so i was gonna say you were born in texas you were raised in texas yeah, I, you're living in texas right. now you took some yeah, time I went off to California Texas. for five years and went, okay, I've seen it. I know what California looks like. I'm going to go back to Texas. <laughs> That's so not true. Uh, oh, no, my goodness. Right. We were talking about you're that right. thing. Oh, no, you're right. Because you're, you're completely right. I know what part of the Bay Area looks like. I did go to go. LA a few yeah. times. And I did drive up to, well, not personally drive, but I did go to Oregon through Northern California. So no, I know no. how much more California there is right. after you leave the Bay Area. It's so weird because it's like there's Southern California, there's Northern California. But Northern California is actually the halfway point of the California coast. But California just doesn't care about the rest of it. Correct. They, just, they don't <laughs> care, which is, which is terrible because my favorite place to camp is actually just south, I believe, of the Oregon border up uh, Manchester, uh, Manchester, Manchester, I think. Lovely. I don't know that specific place, but I love that area. It's beautiful. Well, we got lost looking for a camping site, uh, actually. We were supposed to be someplace that, that I want to say is like another hour north of there, but it was very late, and it was very, I was, we were tired. This was actually my first, this was when my then-girlfriend uh, finally understood that my iPhone was not a toy, because 
we still had like an hour and a half to get to the campsite. We're both completely exhausted because we had taken these little back roads to get where we had gotten to to that point. And so she gets out her camping guides, which she has, and starts looking and, you know, trying to find stuff and all that. And I got out my very first generation iPhone and just, you know, hunted up campsites. And I was like, yeah, there's one <laughs> 10 minutes from here. Let's just go there. Which, you know, it was even able to tell me on the website that they had openings. So, yeah. Anyway, point being, you've seen Technology part of California. Good. Well, no, the California thing. Man, <laughs> we're really lost. Big. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm spending one more time. Yeah, well, go. you're spending one more time. I'm spinning virtually. Okay. DC or Marvel? <sighs> I was afraid I'd get that one. Uh, I really was. <laughs> For the following reason. I know very little of either. Mm -hmm. All right. You're going to have to help me here. Is All Superman right. DC or Marvel? Yes. <laughs> uh, DC. Superman is DC. All right. And okay. So I'll, I will tell you the, the following things I know so that you'll understand my reasoning. Marvel has the MCU, which is this giant thing with a whole bunch of superheroes and movies and the, the like most of which i haven't seen okay. dc has superman uh i liked the 70s superman movies quite a lot and i know a lot more about this sort of history of superman as an it property and i uh i i have enjoyed superman content and i'm trying to remember what there i'm sure there are other dc uh content uh, other dc properties that i would enjoy and some that i wouldn't but i'm going to choose dc just because i know it better okay that's, that's an excellent reason. Honestly, if it had stopped before, basically if it had stopped before Zack Snyder got a hold of the DC stuff, I I would have had a harder time choosing. I think the people who have crafted the stories for Marvel, and yeah, I'm basing most of this on the, on the movie stuff as well, because the comic books, I used to enjoy Superman comics. I haven't really found a Marvel comic book that I like, but as far as the rest of the properties, the you know, TV and movie and stuff like that, I think Marvel kind of crushes it. But back in the day yeah it was just so much more marvel right i mean isn't that true even even though i can't like name very if i had if you forced me to name them i would be able to name a lot more marvel stuff than dc stuff even though i hadn't do you mean like you mean like the movies and things yeah oh yeah, absolutely movies. yeah i mean, just I mean make tons more well i mean so the cw there's a whole weird thing that went on like so the cw ended up making a bunch of dc television shows so they made like the well CB, cbs made Supergirl, but they moved that over to the CW, and that's now run its course. There was Arrow, there's The Flash, there's uh, right. uh, uh, Legends of Tomorrow, I think is maybe one of them. And those are all kind of interesting, but now it feels like I would have to do a lot of catching up. Whereas, you know, all the, yes, the movies, uh, Marvel's just making a ton of them because, you know, it's Disney and it's it's what they do. Right. Uh, and we have parting gifts for you. I've got this uh, this box full of like little eyes and lips. <laughs> and uh, and and weird hair and there's a pipe and I don't know you can, you know, stick those in uh, potatoes sold separately or cucumbers oh. sold separately. Or, well, I, this was actually from my Mister Steak collection, but sure, <laughs> you can do vegetables if you want to. Mister Steak, I believe Mister Steak was a DC uh, show in the '60s. <laughs> I love that idea. Shelly Brisbane, uh, thanks for joining us this week. And of course, uh, thanks for playing Wheel of Stuff. 